Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I'm starting my build of Robbie the Robot. Robbie originated as a supporting character in the 1956 MGM science fiction film, Forbidden Planet. The film's storyline centers on a crew of Earth explorers who land their starship on the planet Altair IV, which was inhabited by the mysterious Dr. Morbius and his daughter Altera. Robbie is a mechanical servant that Morbius has designed and built. Welcome to Altair IV, gentlemen. Robbie was designed by an industrial designer, Japanese-American engineer Robert Kinoshita. He also designed the B-9 robot from Lost in Space both very iconic robots that appeared together on the Lost in Space episode, War of the Robots. It is time we talk. So I decided early on I would make my Robbie animated so he could move and respond to people. I started by loading Ian Hughes's fantastic Robbie STLs into ZBrush. Ian has a ton of cool retro STLs available. Be sure to check him out on Patreon. I will be making adjustments to some parts to better fit the animatronics inside. I started work printing a lot of the head details. I found a great clear resin made by Resione called G217. This stuff is super clear, won't yellow, and it's tough plastic. After printing several pieces, I knew this was going to work for all the clear parts. I started printing the rest of the parts in a gray ABS like resin. Uh, here you can see all those parts finished printing and cleaned up. One very important part that would be very expensive and time consuming to make is the big clear dome on Robbie's head. Thankfully, there is a great builder, Norm Sockwell, who offers them and has done all the hard work. When doing some research, I noticed that Robbie had some retractable arm rings that would allow a portion of the rings on the arms to retract into his body. So I designed a one third scale test arm. This would allow me to figure out how all the parts could work together to make this happen. I designed a tube inside the arm sphere that will house four of the seven arm rings along with the rubber bellows. I'll show more details on the full setup later in this video. But, suffice to say, this looks very promising. I then moved on to printing full-sized rings and designed a full-sized partial printed mold. But this is only one half its length due to the limitations of the height of the printer, but that should be enough to test with. To be clear, these are only test prints to make sure it all works before committing the time and money into full-sized molds and final parts. Once I had all the prints completed, I cleaned the molds and removed the support material and got them ready for pouring silicone. The molds are made of PETG, so I coated them with MAN 200 mold release. I usually do three light coats and wait for a bit between sprays. This really works well with the silicone and releases very well. Once this was dry, I mixed the silicone and just poured it into the mold. I'm pouring into the negative part of the mold and then inserting the core on one side and then pouring in the second half and laying that on top of the other molds. Then using bolts and wing nuts to secure it all together. After the silicone was cured, I just reversed the process and carefully removed the silicone arm section from the molds and then the core. The part is a little rough, but it's going to work as a test piece. As I promised from earlier in the video, we can now revisit the sphere portion of the arm setup. It consists of a tube that all the rings fit into when the arm is retracted. With this design, the arms could be used for someone wearing Robbie as a suit, like in the film, or it can also be used for animatronics. Here I'm finishing up a quick weld, cleanup, and assembly of the outer sphere. And finally, here is a demonstration of how the main parts slide in and out. Installation of the rings and bellows to the sphere is done without any hardware fasteners, mostly for the ease of replacing parts. This might change later, but for now, it all seems to have worked out okay. 
And finally, we can see how all the parts work together with the silicone bellows to extend and retract those four rings. In the final version, there will be three more rings than the wrist and hand. And one more angle looking down into the whole setup. That's it for this episode. In the next one, we'll discuss the hand and how it will be manufactured, the design work, and expectations of the parts. See you next time, and happy building.